All right, guys, jumping right into Arizona Deer Draw 2023, talking about Unit 29. Unit 29 is a pretty famous unit for coos deer. Um, they have giant coos deer. Don't count out the, the mule deer because there are mule deer hunts in there. There's a pretty good mule deer population. However, it's pretty limited because unit 29 is very high. Now, it is like the quintessential Sky Island unit. You literally have desert floor and goes all the way up to uh, high, high elevations, um, seven, 8,000 plus feet. So that is the coos deer preferred habitat. Coos deer love the Sky Island country. They love high country. Um, that's part of what makes the Sonoran Desert the habitat that holds coos white-tailed deer. That, that's why a lot of other places in the country don't have coos whitetail because they only prefer certain specific uh, habitat, certain terrain features and stuff like that. So unit 29 is basically comprised of the Chiricahua Mountains, which are what I described. They're mountains that just pop out of the middle of the desert, go up to really high elevations where there's pine trees and they start in very low country desert stuff where there's cactus, all that kind of stuff. So if you're hunting mule deer, stick on that periphery stick on the periphery of unit 29. There is a problem with 29 when I mention that because there is actually a lot of private land in some of that flatter country. So a lot of private land um, in where the mule deer really like to live. A lot of ranches, um, a lot of lock gates or just private land in general, guys. It doesn't have to be a lock gate for it to be private and for you not to be able to hunt there. So do a little bit of scouting, understand your access points um, and maybe potentially talk to a couple of these people that live there. A couple of the ranchers may potentially let you hunt mule deer on their land or whatever it is, but be aware that uh, it's not national forest. There's a lot of private in that lower periphery of the unit, all the boundaries and uh, outside of the little towns that are exist in unit 29, that is mule deer country. Uh, grassy, grassy flats, um, cactus country. So, Pinpoint that, get elevation, try to glass them up from there, understand where they're living. Um, and then as the elevation gets a little bit higher, that's when you happen to have the coos deer country. So it's it doesn't look that much different from mule deer country, but these coos deer can live in some of that, in a lot of that lower stuff where the mule deer like to live too. So you don't necessarily have to go to the top of the mountain guys in unit 29 to find the coos deer. So just so you know, it's, you don't have to go to the very top of the Chiricahua Chir 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 Mountains to find them. They exist pretty much all throughout Unit 29. Uh, very good population, lot, several seasons. They have a first, second, third, and then a trophy season. So understand the differences in those. And I want to touch on those uh, seasons just a little bit for this. Uh, be, be just because 29 is a lot like some of these other units that now are, you're getting closer to the New, Mex the Me New Mexico border and the Mexico border. So a lot of these units that are more towards the border, more really strictly Sonoran desert country, they will have three to four uh, coos deer hunts. People always ask me, what is the best hunt? What's the best time to go? Um, you know, I, I don't really have a direct answer for that because uh, what I've seen is there's big bucks killed, um, whether by me or or the people that I'm around, some of the guides that work, for, any of that. And just in general, big bucks killed in every single hunt. Your approach will change a little bit and your uh, what you like to do may change. Or if you're more averse to heat, you know, because obviously that October, late October hunt, it's going to be a lot hotter than that early December hunt. And the draw odds differ a little bit, but um, it, there's pros and cons to every hunt, guys. There's not one answer. Um, I will give just my forewarning that late December coos deer tag in some of these southern units can be really hit or miss. It's not a rut tag. And think about it. There's already been three general season hunts in that unit Uh with usually in the hundreds of tags for each of those hunts. So if you think about the math, it's not like some of that Mogollon Rim stuff in 22 and 21, where you don't have very many hunts, you don't have as much hunt numbers. But if you are saving up for a December coos deer tag, really look at the numbers and say, man, there's already been a thousand hunters in here. 
before you even start hunting coos deer in December. There's already been a thousand rifle hunters in some of these units, some more, some more than a thousand before you even step foot in the unit. And it's not really a rut hunt. You can have some rut activity, but it's not, it's, it's not like all you got to do is find does. When I say a rut hunt, basically that means all you got to do is find does and you'll find bucks. It's not that situation. So just understand that. Um, but unit 29 has some giant, giant deer, the country that they live in that high country, the Chiricahua mountains are extremely rugged, very remote. Uh, you have to really get after it. And also just the country itself thick with junipers, thick pine trees, it allows these deer to hide and survive a lot longer, um, and survive hunting season to hunting season, uh, over and over and over again, uh, because people are not usually willing to put in the time to scout and really hike up into some of that country. So if you want to hunt this, understand that you have to be pretty physically fit to get in some of this country. Uh, the Cherokee mountain range is no joke and you got to be ready to go hike. You got to be ready to pack water, uh, and get in some of that stuff where nobody really wants to go. Now, doesn't necessarily mean that all the coos deer are in those really remote spots. Doesn't mean that that's where all the big bucks are hiding, but just to give yourself more of an opportunity and uh, less of an opportunity from somebody shooting one down the ridge from you, obviously you gotta hike in farther and, and find the deer that are living more remote. I will say this, this year for sure, there's gonna be water everywhere. These deer are gonna be living back in some of those places. They are gonna be living more remote than general. Um, you get some years where it's really, really dry and it actually draws all the big bucks out of some of their little nasty hiding holes and they'll go live in more of the common country where you can find them a little bit more easy. Uh, dry falls for hunts, what some people don't really understand, it can be really, really good for hunting. As a hunter, typically you want it as dry as possible uh, when they're not growing and it's hunting season. So when it's growing, like right now, you want tons of rain, you want tons of food because they'll grow nice and big and healthy and, and survive and, and breed and pass their genetics on. But during hunting season, you want those big bucks, you want it dry so they have to come out and get some of that water that's in uh, easy, more easily accessible spaces. So, um, but for the most part, guys, I mean, 20 to 29, you, you can legitimately shoot a hundred plus inch deer and unit 29. Uh, it's a trophy coos deer area for sure. I don't care what hunt you're on. It is a unit where you can really, really, uh, push it, find some really giant deer, especially on year like this, when you've got lots of precipitation. So, uh, I'm all about it. Again, I touched on it a little bit in the mule deer, but there is private land, guys. You got to watch it. There's there's private land stuff. There's access stuff that you have to be careful in 29. It's a lot like Wyoming high country stuff. It's all like Colorado where a lot of people own around the mountain and access points are very, uh, they're, they're bottlenecks. So a lot of people can only access some of that Cherokee Mountain stuff uh, from certain points while the rest is private and locked up. So understand before you go in there uh, where your boundaries are, what you're looking to hunt, do some e-scouting. Um, I'm helping you guys out with some of the stuff on the map and just showing you good spots to start. Um, but understand that it's not like some of the other units where it's basically a free for all. Uh, 29 does have some private land issues. So hope that helped. I hope it educated you guys. I hope it encourages you guys to, if you're on the fence about one unit to the other, um, I, I really try to be transparent and give you guys the best straightforward, uh, approach to each of these units. So you understand what you're getting into and trophy quality and draw odds and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on the links in my description or comments below, uh, try to get back to you guys ASAP and Hey, good luck out there this hunting season. See ya.